Now that we have our model set up, we're going to go ahead and create a Cloudinary account. So before we can actually create any records with our model, we need to add some hosting for our images and we'll also need to set up our rich text editor. So if we go ahead over to cloudinary.com, we can create an account. So you'll need to go ahead and verify your email address and then you should be able to log in. So we're going to go ahead and select the programmable media. So from here, we're going to go ahead over to our dashboard where we want to get our API environment variable. So we'll go ahead and copy that. So we will need this in order to be able to connect from our Django application. So we'll go ahead back to our VS code. So we'll go ahead over to our env.py file and we will create an os.environ and we're going to call this one cloudinary URL and we will paste in the value of that API key. So once you paste that in, you will need to remove the Cloudinary URL equals because we're not setting it up that way. So we have our variable name here already, so we just require what's after the equals. So we're gonna go ahead now and we're going to pip install Cloudinary We're going to pip install Django Cloudinary Storage. And we're going to freeze our requirements. So now we're going to go ahead into the settings.py and we're going to add those in. Now I'm actually going to move these other down below the app. So the order that you load these in matters. So I found quite often with my Django Cloudinary and um, CK Editor that if you load them in before the apps it doesn't like it. So some packages have dependencies on others, which means things need to load in a certain order. So we're going to go ahead in here and we're going to add Cloudinary and we're going to add the Cloudinary storages, storage. So we're then going to go ahead down to the bottom where we're just going to add a couple of additional settings. So underneath our static settings, we're going to add our Cloudinary settings. So we're going to give it a default file storage location. And that is going to be Cloudinary storage dot storage dot media Cloudinary storage. The next one we're going to give it then is our new Cloudinary URL. So that is the one we created a few minutes ago and added to the env.py. So we're just going to say os.environ.get and we named the variable Cloudinary URL. So that should enable us now to upload to Cloudinary. So if you remember going back to our models, we gave it a upload path. So if that doesn't already exist, it will automatically create that directory the first time we try and upload something. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to actually set up our rich text editor. So we'll go ahead back up to the installed apps we will add in the DJ Rich text field. 
and we're going to go ahead and create an editor config for that. So we're going to call this the DJ rich text field config. And this is going to be a dictionary. So we're going to tell it where to load the JavaScript. So this is coming from a CDN online. So that's going to be cdn.ckeditor.com. I'm going to go for the version 4.14.0. Going to take standard ckeditor.js. Then going to use the init template dj rich text field forward slash init forward slash ckeditor.js. So next up, I'm going to give it some settings, and that's going to contain what things we want it to have. So we're going to have a toolbar and on that toolbar we want the top row to have the format bold italic and underline options. We will then also want it to have on the next line the numbered list and the bulleted list. We also want it to have the undo and redo buttons and finally maximize so they can full screen out why they write their instructions and larger content. So after that, after the toolbar settings, I'm going to also just give it a couple of format tags. So the format tags are for format and our text. So we want it to have uh, the paragraph tag and these are separated by semicolons. So we'll have H1, H2 and H3. So now in order for this to be used, we actually need to go ahead and give it a new URL because this is a package that we have installed. So it requires the URLs to be added the same as our all auth was. So this is going to be the DJ rich text field. And we'll use the include method and that will take in the DJ rich text field dot urls. So we'll go ahead now and give that a try. So we'll start up our application. So we'll go ahead now onto our admin panel, into our recipes, and we will add a new recipe. So we will add a user manually from the back end, but when we have our views and our front end form created, that will be done automatically based on the logged in user. So we're going to create a new recipe and any guesses what it is? It's going to be banana waffles. I can't cook by the way, so this is gonna be probably the worst recipe ever. So instructions is one, buy pre-made waffles, two, chop bananas, three, throw bananas on top, and four, coat with syrup. So we'll go ahead and test our title out by giving this a heading level one and this can be method so ingredients we'll have another heading and we'll give this a bulleted list so we need pre-made waffles two bananas and syrup 
choice. So we'll go ahead and add an image. We'll give it an alt of banana waffles on a plate. It's my typos today, it's awful. The meal type is breakfast. We'll say that's European and we'll give it a random 600 calories. So we'll go ahead then and save it just to confirm all of our stuff is working. So as you can see here, it looks like we have everything. Don't worry too much about this. So obviously this looks like HTML because the rich text form error is actually saving it as HTML code. So when we render that on the front end, we can render it with safe and it will show up just as our formatted text. So if we go ahead here and we click on this image, we can see now that we have our link to Cloudinary. So our file has successfully made it. So the only thing left to do now is to begin our CRUD functionality in the next videos.